When difficulties are overcome, they become blessing. Out of the desert of difficulties and afflictions, grow the trees of miracles. In the midst of difficulties lies a host of opportunities. Therefore, let us allow our afflictions, our difficulties, and problems to strengthen our faith and resolve in the Lord. Let us allow our difficulties, our afflictions, our problems to strengthen our faith in the Lord. Our topic this morning is God's promises to the afflicted. What are the promises of God to those who are afflicted? When we talk about affliction, we talk about different problems, situations that is hitting your nerves, both spiritually and physically. Affliction, sorrow, problems, trouble, tribulations, persecutions, sickness. There are many things that you go through in life that devil use to afflict you. But in all these things, God has spoken <clears throat> concerning his divine blessings or divine promises to those who are under the power of affliction. God did not allow you to say, well, you'll be afflicted and so be it. No, there are promises for those who are afflicted. But beloved, saints of God, before we dig into the divine promises of God to the afflicted, let us consider first the ways in which people or individuals may be afflicted according to the Holy Scriptures. The Bible has the list of ways you and I may be afflicted. But as you know, the most important thing is not affliction. It is how we handle it. Affliction will be there. Problem will be there. Trouble will be there. Why? Because we are in the world. Jesus declared in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, he says, In the world you have afflictions and tribulations, but in me you have peace. But be cheerful, I have overcome the world. That tells us that we are going to go through afflictions in this world, but those afflictions must not make us to deny Christ. That's why we are saying how you handle it matters. For me, it is not the problem I face or you face that matters to me. It is how you handle it. How do you handle the problem? Because how you handle the problem will exactly show what you are. How you handle the problem will exactly show what image you carry. Or also portray your trust in God or your faithlessness. So what are the ways, according to the Holy Scriptures... That people can be afflicted. We can be afflicted through slavery and oppression. The book of Exodus chapter 11, chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. The Bible told us concerning the people of Israel in the land of Egypt. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python, and Ramses, but more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. Now, this thing happened when Pharaoh, who did not know Joseph, came to power. When Pharaoh, who did not know Joseph, came to power because the time of Joseph had already gone. As you know, that people of Israel spent well over 400 years in the land of Egypt, almost 430 years. So when Pharaoh, who did not know about Joseph, who did not know Joseph too, came to power, they began to afflict the people of Israel. They are taskmasters. They become suppressed, oppressed, and enslaved. But one thing you must understand, when you are oppressed without reason, God will be on your side. The more they oppressed them, the more they grew. The more they oppressed them, the more they multiplied. Another way you can be afflicted is through various kinds of hardship. There are many hardships that come upon your life. 
hardship of sorrow, sickness, diseases, infirmities, death, bereavement, misunderstanding. So you begin to feel the heat of this confusion and affliction coming because different hardship, various ways, you begin to ask questions, why am I going through this? But as you know now, when you go through this, all you need to do is to lift up your eyes for the day of your redemption is at hand. Thirdly, you can be afflicted through family troubles. As you know in Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 through 11, family problems, misunderstanding of husband and wife, misunderstanding of children and their parents, in-laws and sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws. As you know, sometimes in-laws become outlaws. There are a lot of problems. Confusion. This brings problems. Family problem can bring affliction. Whereby when you talk A, the other one talk B. Especially when mind is not renewed, life is not transformed. Adamic nature continues to spring up every day. From time to time, the ugly part of human nature begins to show up. Affliction begin to come. Especially when you're hit hard by someone who's supposed to know you. Someone who's supposed to trust God for you. It's like, what else? Affliction begin to come. Next, affliction through barrenness. As we saw in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. Hannah was afflicted because she was burdened. She did not bear a child. Therefore, Penina began to ridicule her, mock her affliction. When you don't have a child in your home, your father-in-law begins to say, what happened? I need a grandchild. Mother-in-law says, I need a grandchild. They put pressure upon the couple. They don't know what to do. They try all they can. The more they try, the more they fail. Affliction. Because of pressure. Because they don't have child. And again, not only that, affliction also will come because of the, the, the ridicule ridic ridic you receive. Sometimes, they begin to tell you, oh, because your wife is too old. Or, be, or they ask the boy, did you marry a boy? You didn't marry a girl. Affliction. A lot of things begin to come. It brings problems in the home. There will be no peace. Couple begin to live in pieces instead of in peace. Affliction also through cursing. Second Samuel 16, 12. When we curse people, or people have cursed us, I always warn people, be careful about provoking men and women of God so they don't receive cursing. Remember, David said it very clearly. I will not touch God's anointed because he knew what it carries. And the Bible said, touch not my anointed or do my prophet any harm. Speak no evil about men and women of God, servants of God, lest you get a curse. And when they curse you to come to pass, you must know that. And I always warn, parents don't curse your children. Sometimes parents, when they're angry, they begin to curse their children. Especially those who have inherited that from their own parents. They begin to cause the thing continue to be a chain reaction. If you don't know what you did, you will suffer. If you don't know what you do, you will die. Something must not come out of your mouth as a parent. No matter how angry, how disappointed you are, we must control our mouth because what you say will come to pass if you don't cancel it. So affliction can come through curse. When you have cursed, the person will be under your curse. And that will continue to dislocate and dislodge every progress that the person wants to make in life. It's good you pull back. If you feel that you have been trying your best in the life and you can't succeed, it's good you pull back and check if you have yourself under the generation curse in your family and get set free. Affliction through imprisonment. When you have broken the law, 
the law will break you because you'll be put in behind the bars. You'll be afflicted. You have to pay the price of breaking the law. Then you will suffer because that's what affliction is. When you are put behind the bars, you miss opportunities. The days you're supposed to use to do something meaningful will be gone, wiped out by the wind of affliction. Affliction through persecution and tribulation. As Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. When you go through persecution, I always say it, let it not be that you're persecuted for what you have done wrong, but let it be that you're persecuted because of what you did not do. Then the Lord will be the source of your strength. Many times we give devil the room for us to be persecuted because of doing evil. Let it not be that you are accused of what you have done, but let it be that you are falsely accused. The worst thing is when you are caught doing something wrong. How will it be? You know how many people be hurt? That's why when you're a minister, you need to be very, very cautious in your words, in your actions, in what you do. Because when something has happened to you, it will affect men, not only your family, but many people. Their faith will be shaken. Affliction can come also because of crucifixion. Jesus went through affliction because of the crucifixion. In the book of Isaiah 53, verse 4 through 7. Crucifixion. He suffered for us. He died on the cross that we will be redeemed. Heavenly man came that we, earthly people, will become heavenly people. The Savior came that he may redeem us from our sins. The saint of God came that we sinners on earth will become saints of God. That's why he suffered on the cross when he declared it is finished. Which means we have been set free. That's why when you go through things in life, don't forget that what it is finished. Which means my problem is dealt with by the Lord. Therefore, I am set free. Because on the cross, my freedom was bought. On the cross, I was changed. I was no more what I used to be. On the cross, I was transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. On the cross, I was declared as freed man. Therefore, I walk in that freedom. I walk in that liberty because I know he died that I may be free. Hear man. Amen. Affliction comes also through fasting and humbling our soul. When you fast, you are afflicting your soul, humbling your soul before God. That is why it's important that every man, every woman who call himself or herself a believer must learn how to humble himself or herself before God from time to time. Afflict your soul. Humble your soul in fasting. Because that's a time when you choose to deny yourself food. When you choose to be present with the Lord and absent in the body. When you choose to die to your flesh and keep your eyes on God, it helps in our spiritual walk. It helps in our war in the spirit. It helps in a battle against unseen forces. It helps when we try to pull down stronghold. It helps when we try to bind and lose. It helps when we try to tell the devil to stop. It helps. Affliction. Due to defeat in warfare. Surely when you are defeated in a war, you'll be afflicted. Because your conqueror will always subject you to, to slavery. Same goes in the spiritual warfare. When you are overcome by the enemy, he will subject you to sufferings, sacrileges. Because he become your master. That is why it's important. As we fight battle, we must not let go. We are told that the battle we are in is not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. 
Wherefore, though we walk by flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapon of a warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God. Tody, pulling down our strongholds. So anything that tries to build stronghold in our lives, we pull them down. Why? Because if you don't pull down your stronghold, your stronghold will pull you down. That's why it's important. Wherever we are, we have been given a weapon. We have been given weapons. You can use the blood of Jesus to come against those strongholds. You can use the name of Jesus to bring down those strongholds. You can use the anointing of God to break every yoke. Isaiah 10, 27. God's people. That is why you walk with your head up. Because you know your redeemer up. That is why in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 22, it said, Look up, you inhabitants of the earth, and be saved. We well, look up. Afflictions due to carelessness. Judges chapter 16, verse 5 and 6, verse 19. And also verse 21 through 31. Carelessness. What do we mean by this? Many believers today are callous. They are playing with sin. Many Christians are playing with sin. You know you're not supposed to go where you are going and you choose to go. You know you're not supposed to do what you're doing but you choose to do it. We forgot what Apostle Paul had declared to the church of Thessalonians. He said, abstain from all appearances of sin. The man called Samson in Judges chapter 16 was called to be a Nazarite. Being a Nazarite, he is barred from so many or couple of things that he doesn't need to do. But he completely neglected all the instruction given to him by the Almighty God. And therefore he became a slave to those he's supposed to defeat. We are supposed to be overcomers, but many times because of our carelessness, we become slaves to those things that we're supposed to overcome. God's people. You know that you are not supposed to walk in pride because the Bible declared in the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 that pride leads to destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Yet, people continue to walk in their pride thinking that will make them to be known. We know we're not supposed to lie, yet we call it to lie because we call it smartness. When we lie, we call it smartness. You're smart because you lied. God's people. That's why carelessness has destroyed many lives, just as it destroyed the life of Samson. Samson had a besetting sin in his life. What was the besetting sin in Samson's life? The sin of lustfulness. Woman. Woman. That's why we always tell ministers, there are three G's which you have to guide against. Three G. G. G for gold. One G is gold. That is money. Be careful about money. Second G is girls. That's women. And the third G is glory. Don't touch God's glory. His besetting sin, Samson, was lustfulness. And he was destroyed. He was supposed to destroy the enemy, but the enemy ended up destroying him. Affliction through poverty and hunger. I always say this. Poverty is a cousin of laziness. If you're lazy, you become poor. Poverty. God did not create any man to be lazy. The wise man who wrote the book of Proverbs made it clear concerning laziness. It leads you to poverty. That's why he said, go to the ants and learn wisdom. The wise man said. Today, when we encourage young people, study, and come up in life. Some of them think, well, I don't need to study because I can go and work in factory. Now listen. The economy we are in is an economy of wisdom. Knowledge-based economy. It's not physical strength-based economy. Whereby you can, you can push this stage out and get your money. 
Time will come, we don't need it. Machine will do it. So you need to use your knowledge. That's what we encourage young people. Tap from the knowledge God has given to you and excel and be a living testimony. Because the will of God is for his people to be the head and not the tail. To be the lenders and not the borrowers. That's the will of God. And you push them. Sometimes they lax. Thinking, well, got factory. Now listen carefully. It's a matter of time. The factories, all these heavy weight factories, pollution emitting factors will be out. So you need to use your knowledge and begin to work. As long as this nation is concerned. So laziness is a cousin to poverty. You will suffer because of what? Laziness, because of poverty, because of hunger. Therefore, make hay while the sun shines. Do your own part now so that in future you will enjoy what you have sown. Remember, the Lord of sowing and reaping will never stop. You will always reap what you sow. If you don't sow now, well, you reap hardship later. Now you may ask, then what are the promises that God has given to those who are afflicted. There are tremendous blessings and promises God has given. That is what keeps us on. Because when you dig into the Holy Scriptures and see the blessings, the promises that God has given to his people and say, when you go through afflictions, I will be there. The Bible told us in the book of Job, chapter 34, verse 30, 28, 34, 28, God will hear the afflicted. Which means, when the afflicted cries out to God, God will hear. God will give ears to their cry. Because that is our God. He wants to bring us out of the afflictions. So that we will begin to enjoy tremendous blessing he has for his people. Secondly, in the book of Psalms 18.27, the Lord will save the afflicted. He will save you from your sickness, save you from your disease, which is afflicting you, save you from the condition that is afflicting you, save you from the circumstance that is afflicting you, save you from the situation that brings affliction to your life. He will save you from those pains that you've been going through all these years. If you remember today, as you hear the word says, God will save the afflicted. Whatever has been afflicting you, let the Lord, this is your word. You will save the afflicted like me. And God will do it for you. Say, command ye me with the words of my hands. And when Isaiah was writing in the book of Isaiah, Chapter 41, 21, it says, produce your case with strong reasons. Produce your case with strong reasons. Tell the Lord, I am being afflicted because of this pain, this sickness, this disease, this attack, this situation. Serve me, O oh Lord, according to your word. You'll see what will happen. It will come to pass. Because God will always fulfill his word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will never pass away. It remains the same. That's why we call him unchanging changer. He changes our situation. But our God never changes. Can I hear amen? Glory to his name. He will have mercy on the afflicted. Isaiah 49 13. He will have mercy upon us. If you are afflicted, he will have mercy. Remember what the Bible says in the book of James. In chapter 2 verse 13 it says, Judgment is without mercy to him who shows no mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. He will have mercy, for his mercy endures forever. That's the mercy of the Lord. He will have mercy on the afflicted. What are the things you are going through? The Lord said, I will have mercy on you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember when he spoke in the book of Romans chapter 9. In verse 15 and 16 he says, I will show mercy to whom I will show. For it is not him who run it, but it is God who shows mercy. Hallelujah. So that's it's God who shows mercy. Therefore, he shows mercy to the afflicted. Are you afflicted? It does not matter what are the situation you're going through. It doesn't matter the circumstance you are facing in your workplace. It doesn't matter what you have already gone through. The Lord said he will show you mercy. And he will do it. He will do it. Because the promises of God, 
in Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. The promises of God is fulfilled in him in yea and in him in amen. So let it be. And remember, the revelation said, They saw he that sits upon the throne, he that rides upon the horse, his name is Amen. That's his name. Amen. So let it be, so it is, and so it shall be. Next. God will deliver the afflicted from fear. Psalms 23 verse 4. Though you walk to the value of death, the Lord will deliver you from the fears. There is something that is creating fear in your life because of what? Affliction. Maybe you come from a family where people always suffer from depression. So a little bit of sickness, you say, maybe I'm going to fall into depression. Fear. Maybe you come from a family where there are two cases of cancer. The moment you have stomach upset, it's a cancer. Fear. Maybe you come from a family where somebody had already gotten tumor in the brain. Anytime you have headache, you say, maybe a tumor. Fear. Fear everywhere. But if you forget the Bible told us in Psalm 23 verse 4, though you walk through the valley of death, you shall not be afraid. Why? Because the Lord has delivered you from fears. Whatever that brings fear in your life, you've been delivered. That's why in Isaiah 41 10 it says that fear not, for I will be with you. I will hold you with the right hand of my righteousness and I will declare, do not be afraid. And in verse 12, 13, and 14, same thing declared. It said, you will look for adversaries. You will not f- find them because the Lord will declare to you, fear not. Don't be afraid. He delivered the afflicted from fears. It's true when you go through things in life. Let's face reality now. It's a reality check. When you go through things in life, you become scared sometimes. It's like, is this going to happen again? And another thing is this. If you have been beaten by a snake, when you see worms or lizard, you will jump because all are crawling. You're scared. <clears throat> it's a normal thing. You know, there are many Christians, oh, they can speak in tongues, they can prophesy, they can shake, but when they see cockroach, they run. Many. They're scared of cockroaches. I pray that you'll be delivered from the affliction of cockroaches. There are many people like that. They run for their lives. Little bit, some also, when they see just a little bit of flies, they run. They cannot stand. But they see snake, they will kill snake. They will do anything, but when it comes to cockroach, they run. God's people. Whatever affliction in your life or Maybe you'll be making a mistake in your workplace because of the mistake you made before. They sack you, sack you again. So when you go to work, when you find a new job, you're scared. Come out from that. Devil is trying to use fear to stop your progress. <clears throat> Devil is trying to use fear to make you like an orphan without a heavenly father. Devil is trying to use fear to curb your activities for the glory of God. Come on, the Lord will deliver you. In I, Psalms again, 34, God will deliver the afflicted out of all his troubles. This is fantastic. I would like to read that. The book of Psalms chapter 34. Look at verse 19. Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Powerful. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the people of God. But there's one thing you know. The Lord our God delivers us from all of them. It doesn't matter the affliction. There are people who have multiple afflictions. Sickness. Fear. Torment of fear. Work pressure. Family pressure. In-law pressure. Money pressure. Violence, pressure, many things they have. But the Bible says many are afflictions. There are many of them. But the Lord, our God, delivers the righteous from all of them. Not even a single one remains. That's why when I read the book of 1 King, chapter 8, verse 56, he said, all the promises 
as many as they are, good promise that God had given to his son Moses, not a single one of them failed. That tells you that when God comes in, our situation changes. When he comes in, something happens. Unless your hands have been soiled by sin. Unless your life is under stronghold, which need to be broken or need to be pulled down. But when you call upon the Lord, he's always there for you. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. He didn't say some, he said many are there. But the Lord delivers the righteous from all of them completely. God uphold afflicted. In Psalms 37, I would like us to see that. Psalms 37, look at verse 23 and 24 to 27. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and it lies in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. The Lord upholds the afflicted. Your steps is being ordered by God. Whatever you go through, the Lord knows about them. He knows every step you take. He knows every move you make. As I always say it, he is the silent listener to all conversation. The Lord listens to all your conversations, good or bad. He is the unseen guest. In your home, in your place, anywhere you are, is there watching. He is the all-seeing God. His eyes run to and fro upon the earth to show himself strong in the midst of his people. So he orders your steps. He knows where you are and where you're going. He upholds you. Even though you fall, you are not totally cast down. As I always tell you, though you are knocked down, you are not knocked out. You're always there for you. And in verse 25, he said, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor he seen his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lames, and his descendants are blessed. At the time as you read through, you see what God has promised to his people when you are afflicted. Though you are afflicted, your seeds, your descendants will never lack food. The Lord will supply. As long as you learn how to stand your ground, and know the promises of God which are given to you. Many of us, when we are afflicted, we completely forget about God's promises. It doesn't make sense to us. When we are sick, we don't remember by the stress of Jesus we are healed. When we are confused, it's totally, we are totally out. No more remembering God's word. I always ask this question. When you are afflicted, what comes to your mind? Do you remember the word of God? Do you remember his goodness? Do you remember that the Lord will not leave you nor forsake you? You know why we forget about God? Because of the way we live. We live a careless life like Samson. We've been told what to do. We've been instructed divinely what to do. We choose to go our own way. And we have excuses to give for not doing what God has told us to do. Excuses. We have tons of excuses. God's people. You need to get that tape called Christians and Excuses. In Psalms 55, 22, it says, Cast your burden upon the Lord, for the Lord will not allow the righteous to be moved. Bring all your afflictions. Because affliction means burden. Give it to the Lord, for he will not allow you to be crushed by the weight of that or be moved. He will always be there for you. He is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. That's who he is. He is the companion of the divorcee. The husband of the widow. He is the friend of the lonely. God's people. He is the comforter of the single. He just hold on to God. The healer of his people. The ancient of days. He shields you every moment. The rock of all ages. That's our God. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, a moment, verse 10 through 12, God will reward the afflicted. Yes, he will reward you when you're afflicted. Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. 
Blessed are those who are prosecuted, or as you may put it, afflicted, for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and prosecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they prosecuted the people who were before you. You have a reward when you are prosecuted. If we can remember this, we will not revile people for them reviling us. If we will remember this, we will not fight back. Many times we fight back, use our tongue to fight back, use our every physical thing in us to fight back. But if you remember the word of God, you will not. Say rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For so they persecuted, so they afflicted those who had gone before you. So it is. God's people. God's word is real. God's word is precious. God's word is certain. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will remain the same. Hold on to God's word in every situation you are. It does not matter what people have said or comment they pass about you. What matters is what God says about you. You may call me a good man, but if God has called me a bad man, it doesn't help. But he may call me a bad man, but God sees me to be a good one. And that's my joy. Therefore, don't bother about what people say about you. They will persecute you. They will afflict you. They want to create fear in your life so that you will lose all hope and faith you have in God. But those who look up, they will know that their redemption is near. There's a reward for you. Hold on to God's reward and you'll receive. In Psalms chapter 9, verses 9 and 10, the Lord will be a refuge for the afflicted. If you have been afflicted, the Lord will be your refuge. Psalms 9, verses 9 and 10. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will, be put, will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. The Lord will be a refuge to those who are oppressed, those who are afflicted. If you are afflicted, hear it this morning, the Lord will be your refuge. The Lord will be your hiding place. And the Bible says, the name of the Lord is a high tower. The righteous run into it and he is saved. The Lord will be your refuge. A place that you will run and be protected. A place where you will be hidden, preserved. Nothing will touch you. Only because you have made the Lord your God a place of refuge. God will remember the weaknesses of the afflicted. In the book of Psalms 103 verse 13, the Lord will remember your weaknesses. He will not allow your weaknesses to bring you down. He will remember your weaknesses. You know, the Lord knows our weaknesses. He knows area that we are not strong. Because he is our strength. The strength of Israel will not fail Israel. Therefore, the God of believers will never fail us. We hold on to God. Hold on to him. Allow him to do that great work in our life because he knows our weaknesses. Though we are weak, he is strong. That's why we hold on to him. Many times we say we are weak, but actually we are fighting our battles. <laughs> Many times God says, let go, let go, let go, but we're still holding on. Let go, let go. Hold on. Lord, I cannot handle this. God says, okay, let go, let go. We're still holding on. I, cannot hand I know you cannot handle Let go, let go, but we're still holding on. We don't let go. That's the problem with us. We profess and tell God that we, we are not able to handle the situation, but yet we don't want to let go. We're going to hold on, hold on, hold on. He is the one who knows your weaknesses and he will protect your interests. The Lord will hide the afflicted. This is one of my favorite verses. He hides you and I because we have been afflicted. In the book of Psalm 27, 
Look at verse 5. 27 verse 5. It says, For in the name, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Powerful. In a time of trouble, the Lord will hide you. Be it in your workplace. If you can remember Psalms 27 verse 5. In your workplace, always remember, Lord, thy word say that you will hide me in a time of trouble. Hide me, Lord, I pray. And you see what will happen. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he will hide you there. So that nothing will touch you. He shall hide me. He shall set me on high on a rock. He will hide you. Maybe there are problems in your company, on your place of work. There are things happening. Will you remember that the Lord will hide you? Maybe in your school, in your university, in your college. Will you remember that the Lord will hide you? Maybe when your neighbor tries to be mean, do you remember? The Lord will hide you. Maybe when there are chaos, havoc, created by Satan and his agents, the Lord will hide you. Maybe a situation that it seems everything has been lost, the Lord will hide you. He will protect you. He will keep you and hide you in his tabernacle and set you on a rock. That's what the Bible says. The Lord will consider the afflicted. Psalm 31 verse 7. He will consider you. Good consideration. The Lord will give you good consideration. Have you gone for interview? You remember God. I've gone for interview. Lord remember your word in the book of Psalm 31 verse 7. Give me good consideration. And the Lord will consider you. Because he is God who considers his people. He will consider you. Will you remember that? That the Lord will consider me. Just check what happened to Nehemiah. Nehemiah, it was a law that nobody who served in the presence of the king will put on a papaya face or a long face. But that day he did it. The Lord considered him. He was not killed, but he was asked, what happened to you? Favor was given to him. Look at Esther. Esther was considered. It was not time for Esther to enter the chamber of the king. For it is written, according to the law, if anyone enter the chamber when it is not time, thou shalt die. But she said, well, if I die, let me die. If I perish, let me perish, I will enter. And after seeking the Lord in fast and praying, what happened? She entered and God considered her. Remember Deborah. Deborah told the chief military commander to go for war. But the chief military commander said, I will not go this way unless you, Deborah, come with me. And Deborah said, Today you know that the Lord has given the enemy in the hands of a woman. And she went to the war and she won. God considered her. God's people, check through the Bible. God always considers his people and give them victory. Give them favor. That favor is powerful. That favor comes from God. When God's favor comes upon you, the favor of man will com completely follow God's people. Therefore, ask that God will consider you. Ask that God, please, Lord, consider me. And he will do so. Because you remember his word. You remember his word. Use these things to press your case. And you see what will happen. Last and not the least. God will provide sufficient grace for the afflicted. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. The Lord will supply sufficient grace. He will provide you with sufficient grace. In every situation, just as Apostle Paul went to the Lord and told him, Lord, this turn my flesh. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. And same, he will supply you with sufficient grace. And remember the Bible said, God resists the proud and gave grace to the humble. So learn to be humble. Humility is the key. For spiritual power. Remember to be humble. Humility is not wearing t-shirt to church. Humility is not wearing slippers. Humility is inside outside. It is the attitude of the heart. Gospel. It is remembering your humble beginning. Regardless of your height of achievement. You remember your humble beginning. 
That is why God is calling you and I, when you are afflicted, he has already made provision for blessings, made provision for promises that will carry you through. So when you are afflicted, don't say, I cannot take it. I don't understand this. Why is it, should it be me? Why can't it be other people? Remember, you are afflicted. There are blessings for your life. There are things God has kept for you. There are things God has made provision for you. When God has given you a mission, he will make the provision. When you hear God's word, do not harden your heart.